All right, so we need to find where two uh -oh, times cosine x minus power over 4 plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so if we subtract 1 from both sides, 2 cosine of x minus power over 4 equal, uh -oh, equals negative 1. Divide by 2, you know that cosine of x minus power of 4 equals negative 1 half. Okay. So that means for this to be true, we need to know that cosine of x equals negative 1 half when x equals 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. Oh, let me clean up. That looks like a 7. I don't want any mis mistakes made because of my bad penmanship. Okay, 8 pi over 3, 10 pi over 3, and et cetera, et cetera, and so on. Because remember, x is, well, yeah, x is only negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So you have quadrant 2, quadrant 3. And then if it circles around again, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. Then it circles around again, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. <coughs> okay. So that means cosine of x minus power of 4 would equal negative 1 half when x minus power over 4 equals 2 pi over 3. Four pi over 3. Eight pi over 3. And 10 pi over 3, and so forth and so on and so on. Okay, so that means if we add power over 4, Those who cancel out, so that means x would have to equal 11 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12, 35 pi over 12, and so forth and so on and so on. All right, so now we just have to graph this with those intercepts. And instead of redrawing a bunch of that, I'll just go ahead and re well, I'll just go ahead and redraw it. Just makes it easier. Okay, so we're going to redraw that same graph on the next page. Oh, he was still writing this part. All right. Okay, so if we go ahead and graph it, I'll drop that down a little bit. We're going to need the space. Okay, so we know it goes from 3 to negative 1 because we shifted it up. And it stretches down like that, give or take. Eh, let me see if I can straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so remember this is our y equals 2 cosine of x minus power over 4 plus 1. Okay, 
And this, we know that's our 11 power over 12. Oh, that didn't go all the way there. That actually stopped because it did shift. So it stops right there. And this is our 19 power over 12. Okay, we already figured out where those intersect. Okay, so we now know that those are vertical asymptotes. So we go ahead and draw our vertical asymptotes because that's where our graph can't cross. Okay, so everywhere else in between those vertical asymptotes, we're going to flip it. That means here we're going to flip it because this will actually go all the way down, but we're just going to worry about from here to here. So this would actually flip, and this would actually flip, and this would flip also. Let me bring that up. And if we did decide to bring that all the way down, it would just look like that. And if we went a little further this way, it would look like that. It's just a series of U's upside down U, U upside down U, U upside down U. It just rotates back and forth. But sometimes if you see it and they stop maybe at the x-axis, you'll only see it as kind of like half of U. Or if they stopped it right at the end of one cycle, it will look just like, you know, one half of a U there. <clears throat> kind of depends on where they decide to cut it off. Okay, so this is actually a graph of, and we'll say down to there, your Y equals 2 secant of X minus power of 4 plus 1. 